Hi, I'm Dr. Brian Fraser, and in this video we'll be creating the following application that displays some radio buttons and allows us to select them. We respond to the on-click events of those radio buttons, and then we can respond to a different event and figure out kind of which radio button is selected. So for example here we can know that we've selected this radio button. I've got Open Android Studio here with a blank project, and the first thing I'm going to want to do is put some data into a resource file. This will be the data that actually gets displayed as the contents of the radio buttons. So I'm going to create a new resource, the resource, and then under uh, Values, I'm going to right click on this and say New, and then Value Resource File. I give it a name, I'm going to call this one, uh, let's call this uh, Installation size. It would maybe put in sort of the size, number of number of solar panels that we're going to have, um, be able to select between for the installation size. And then that sounds, I think, good to start with. And then inside of here, I want to put in the the values I want to have. So I want to here. I'm going to use what's called uh, the integer um, integer array. So I'm going to say I want a new integer array, and I got to give it a name. So this one, call this one. Uh, num solar panels. And then inside of this I want to put in items. That's the only valid thing I can put in here. So we'll just list the numbers that we want. So let's say that you wanted uh, you could have 10 solar panels or 15. Oops. Or we'll go with uh, a couple more. So that was control D to duplicate. We'll say 25 and maybe 50. Let's say these are the numbers that we want to display in our um, uh, radio buttons. So now that I've got those, I can access them inside of my code when I need them. In order to start populating the radio buttons, I need to put in a, a sort of a target into my activity. So inside of the design view here, I'm going to need to change the theme so that it actually displays correctly. Let's go hollow dark. So I'm going to put in here a radio grouping and then we're going to have our Java code populate the items in there. So on the left hand side I want the radio button and I think I want the radio group down here to start with. So I'm going to drag in a radio group and it's initially pretty small. I can give it a uh, name if I want so let's just give it a name of uh, radio group install size or something like that in case we need it. Now if I wanted to, I could drag from up here, I could drag a radio button down and drop it into this radio group and we can see that the things start to pop up. Let me just zoom in. And I'll switch the theme here to hollow light. So we can see the radio buttons are going to come in here. I could change them around if I wanted to, but that would give me statically created radio buttons. And I don't want that. I want dynamically created radio buttons so I don't have to hard code each of them. So back in my main activity here, I'm going to create a new method, something like uh, setup. Let's call it create radio buttons. And in fact, we'd normally give it a better name, something like create in solar panel install size or something like that. I'm going to hit Alt Enter on the keyboard and then create the method. Uh, enter to select the return type of void. And now I need to go through and actually find the radio group on the user interface and then start populating the elements into it. So let's start off by uh, getting our grouping that we need. So I'm going to call here, I'm going to go radio, uh, for me, radio group. And I'm going to call this one group equals oops, radio group. I need to cast what I'm going to get back from find view by ID find view by ID and I gave it the name so it's r.id dot radio group install size. This is my radio group to put things into. And then I'm going to create the buttons as I'm going to add them to it. So I also need to get a way to get through my uh, contents of my um, install sizes here. Let me just split vertically. So I want to iterate through this list somehow. So let me resize. There we go. I need to gain access to that. And so in order to do so, I'm going to um, 
called get resources, and this is going to be an integer array, so I'm going to call get resources, and on the get resources I can call get integer array. I give it the ID, well this is the num solar panels, so that's going to be an r dot array dot num solar panels, and so now I have access to the array, it's coming back to me as an integer array, so I need to say here int array, and let's call this one uh, num panels. So as I do this, I need to iterate through each of these. So I'm going to say for int i equals 0, i less than num panels, i plus plus, and int num panel, num panels sub i. Now it occurs to me here I've got the wrong, uh, I need to say dot length on my array. I'm messing up my uh, format or my naming, so I'm going to click on this. I'm going to refactor, so I'm going to do a Shift F6 to rename it, and I'm going to say num panels. Uh, okay, so now I've got the the values to work with. I now need to create my radio button, so I'm going to create a single radio button. Button equals new radio button, and I need to give it a reference, some context. So I'm inside of an activity, so I can just say this. It gives us some context to work with. Uh, next I can begin to set things on it and work with it. So I'm going to say my button dot set, and I can set, for example, the, um, the text that's going to appear. So we'll just put in some text, something like uh, item, and we'll fix this up in a minute, uh, num panel. So that's the number I want to work with. In fact, let's make it a little bit clearer now. The num panel plus space solar panels. So we'll say something like, you know, uh, 10 solar panels, 15 solar panels, 25 solar panels, 50 solar panels. Um, I can do some other changes to it if I needed to. The big one I want to do is get notified in my code whenever someone clicks one of these buttons. Well, in fact, before we get into that, let's first, I'll put in a note here, so set on click callbacks, and we'll make this a to-do. To-do, the first thing I'll do here is actually add it to the list, so add to radio group. So I can say group dot add view, and I want to add the button. And that should be good enough for adding it in. So now, let's uh, go ahead and run this. Launch it in my emulator. You can see it's building. Installing. And launching. And here is my activity. Hmm. Not quite what I was expecting. Uh, let's see if we can figure out why not. So it went through, it put them in. If I look at my activity here, it didn't even have the right stuff that I was expecting. The hello world. So let's see if we got the Android monitor up. We'll connect to it and see if it was throwing any exceptions or weird behaviors. I think, let's try that again. Relaunch. I'll clear the list to start with. There we go. So the first thing we note here is that we'd like this to actually be stretched wider. So what I need to do is I need to say on my radio group that I want it to fill the window here, the size of this window and then my uh, internal radio items should expand. And we can see here as I click on these, I can change between them. So, if I go back to my activity here and I click on my radio group, I will zoom out a little bit. View all the properties on it. And we want to say for this radio group, we want 
instead of the height and the width, so the width is wrap content, I'm going to make this width match parent. And so now it should stretch all the way across. Let's rerun. Mm, nothing. Let's try that again. So my radio group here. Height. Layout margins. It's got a huge margin, so let's actually just stretch that. There we go. The problem was the margin. There we go. Now that's looking nice. So maybe why don't we uh, make it that when I click one of these, we'll start by putting up a toast. So let's go back over here. I need to have a callback, so let's do that. So I'm going to say button dot set on click listener, so that when you uh, select any one of these, it will then begin to uh, run my code. I can say new on click listener, just hit enter, and it then fills in the rest for me. And here I'm simply going to say toast dot make text uh, context of main activity dot this, and then I need to give it some text. So a text sequence, so something like you clicked me and a duration toast dot short. And of course with the toast I need to also call show. Now one thing I would want to say is I want to put in something like you clicked me and then put in the size. But if I tried to do that at the moment, so you clicked and we'll put in the size here. So num panels. There we go. You'll note here that it had automatically gone and it added this final specifier in front of the num panels. That is needed because this is actually inside of a different class or different object as well. And it holds a reference back to us, has access to things, but it needs to know that this particular variable is not changing. So I have to put that in here. Uh, an easy way to do that is simply if you're trying to access, say, uh, the, the um, array directly and having some problems with that, the easy way to do that is pull out the thing you want to access inside of your anonymous class and make it final in a local variable up here. And that's good enough. So let's rerun this. Comes back online and when I click on the 15, for example, you clicked 15. When I click on 50, you clicked 50. Okay, so now we have our radio buttons. We have an on-click listener for our radio buttons. And we're showing a toast, which is great. A few other things I want to do. I want to maybe um, start by cleaning up some of my text here. So at the moment I'm doing a set text and I'm manually constructing it. What I want to do is I want to pull that out and I want to put that text into my strings.xml. So I can select it here and then if I hit Alt Enter it brings up sort of the uh, what do you want to do with this. And I wish to uh, why not? I just click on it, Alt Enter Extract string resource, of course. So say extract string resource. Let's call this one solar panels, I'll call it. And you can see the text here, it's got space solar panels. And it's going to go into strings. And now we're going to call get string on that. Now it turns out there's one thing, and now we're just kind of concatenating it here. In certain languages, you might want the number to appear in different places. So we can actually do better than just doing a manual concatenation in my code here. I can actually get it to be kind of like a, a printf statement almost with some uh, blanks inside of it. So let me control click on it to take me to this code. And what I want to do is I want to put it here. This I want to be my uh, first sort of, I want to put the value at the front there. So I want to put in this sort of magic formatting string. So I'm going to put in a uh, percent here. So I'm going to say percent one for the first argument and then I'm going to say dollar sign d meaning it's a decimal value. And this is then going to be populated with the first argument I give to my get string. So get strings here, and I can then pass in an argument, num panel, and I no longer need this. Get string is going to do all the work for me. So it's going to fill in the blank here for me. Let me just run that and show you that it works. And then we'll change it around and we can show you what it would do. So same as before, no change. And now you can imagine I translate this to some other language where it's got to be like, uh, uh, panel numbers numbered and I can kind of change the string around 
imagine that right in, say, German or Japanese. And now we can see that it put it in the right spot. So now my code doesn't need to change. All I do is I update my strings XML. So it's better for internationalization. I'm going to put it back to what made sense in English. OK, now the other thing that you could do is you might at some point want to, in response to an event in your program, query which of these was selected. So at the moment I can click on one of these. It tells me something happened. My um, my toast is popping up. You can imagine that when I clicked on one of these, it would update the rest of the UI, maybe to compute the cost of a solar panel installation system or something. But let's say that I wanted to, in response to a different button press, figure out which one of these was actually uh, selected. So let's put in a new button. I'll we'll put in a button. Yeah, let's drop it in at the bottom. And we're going to call it, give it an ID of something like um, find find selected. And let's go back to the E short view. And for text, so print selected. So now we'll just quickly set that up in our code. So uh, set up print selected. Oops, didn't want to do that. Create the method. So I'm going to need a button. R.id dot find selected. Import the class. And I can say button dot set on click listener, new on click listener. And then the thing I want to do here is find out which radio button of my radio buttons was actually selected. So the first thing I want to do is gain a reference to my radio button group. I'll just copy that up here. And then on that, I can go int id of selected equals, I can say group dot uh, get checked radio button id. Now this will give me the id of the button, which of course was dynamically created. Um, I'd need to, maybe if I wanted to reference them later, I could store it. But then I could do anything I wanted down here. Um, I could say, for example, um, uh, string on, I can go, for example, uh, radio button, radio button equals find view by ID. I now have the ID, ID of selected. And I could say something like, String message is equal to radio button dot get text to string. And let's put up a toast with that. So uh, toast dot make text on uh, main activity dot this and selected uh, buttons text is and then I can concatenate it with message. And we'll give it the duration of toast dot short, and then call dot show. So here I need to add a cast. So all I'm doing is when I click the button, I'm going to um, find my radio group. I'm going to ask it which button is selected. It'll give me an ID, and then based on that ID, I can actually get the button and then do anything I want with it. So in this case, I'm going to uh, get its, uh, its text. So I'll have this selected, print selected, and it'll actually kind of access that after the fact. Uh, very often times you want to make the UI responsive, and so just having it respond to the on-click events inside of your uh, um, radio buttons is a great way to go. Okay, thank you for watching.